Hello, you're watching BBC World News. I'm Adnan Nawaz. Our top story this hour. After the austerity deal, the hard sell. Less than 24 hours after clinching a deal with his EU partners, the Greek Prime Minister now faces resistance over the tough measures he has to introduce at home. And welcome once again our other main stories this hour. Marathon talks aimed at curbing Iran's nuclear ambitions are continuing in Vienna. A top-level meeting is scheduled for a few hours' time. Five billion kilometers from home, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft is preparing to fly past Pluto. It's going to send us back the clearest images we've ever seen. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock with the business stories and the oil prices are falling in anticipation of an easing of sanctions against Iran as negotiations over the country's nuclear program nears a deal. Plus the sale of the century. Experts warn Greece will struggle to sell 50 billion euros worth of assets, which is a key requirement of the country's latest financial bailout. After Monday morning's announcement that Greece had finally agreed the broad outlines of a new bailout package, the most widespread analysis this Tuesday morning is that the country has capitulated to its creditors. Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras now has until the end of Wednesday to convince his own parliament to vote for the deal. His MPs, well, all of them really, and he needs the opposition to do it, they'll have to pass new laws on taxes, pensions and the liberalisation of the labour market. Simon Jones reports. Back in Athens, the Greek Prime Minister has a deal to sell to Parliament and his people. But cracks are emerging in Alexis Tsipras's coalition, with the Deputy Foreign Minister quitting and a junior partner saying it won't back the deal agreed in Brussels. But only with pension and VAT reforms will Greek banks get an urgent injection of cash. Taxes, 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 more taxes, taxes, taxes. So we don't have much money to pay those taxes. I think it's better than not to have the deal. So the question could be, you want the drachma or not the drachma? And most of us, I believe, we prefer to stay in Europe. There have been protests in Athens against more austerity, and one of Greece's largest trade unions has already called a 24-hour strike for tomorrow. But one government minister says no deal was not an option. The banks have been closed, as you know. That was not the choice of the government, and the next step would have been an exit from the Eurozone. But after the marathon meeting in Brussels, the negotiations in Athens to get the deal through are continuing. Simon Jones, BBC News. So what went on behind the closed doors of the negotiations in Brussels? Certainly very tense it was. The talks fraught with bickering and mistrust. And Ben Bland has been investigating. It took 17 hours of talks to reach a deal. The sticking point was a demand by the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. She wanted 50 billion euros of Greek state assets put into a fund in Luxembourg to pay off creditors and rescue Greek banks. The Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras was reportedly close to walking out. He said if he agreed to one more condition, he feared Greeks would brand him a sellout. The European Council President, Donald Tusk, chairing the summit, said he would not let Tsipras and Merkel out of his office until they agreed. Christine Lagarde and Mario Draghi twice intervened to remind Tsipras that their institutions, the IMF and the European Central Bank, were financing his budget and Greece's banks. Sources said they were extremely close to the worst-case scenario at 6 a.m. But eventually a compromise emerged on the privatisation fund. Officials said it was a great relief. 
but it was a summit marked by mistrust and bickering, magnified by the fatigue. Just to begin negotiations on a bailout of up to 86 billion euros, but only if the Greek parliament approves the deal by Wednesday. Ben Bland, BBC News. And let's talk to you about Greece. Of course, you've been hearing Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has returned home after the weekend's marathon negotiations over a third bailout package for his indebted nation. But those talks may seem easy compared to the battle he is now facing, convincing his country this deal is good. Many Greeks feel the conditions for the deal were too harsh. Let's speak to Tanya Beckett, who is in Athens uh, for us. So pressure back on Alexis Tsipras now, uh, Tanya. She's got he has got to get his his government on board and opposition politicians as well. Yes, our understanding thus far, and of course you're referring to the vote that he now has to get through Parliament, pushing all of these reforms which have been stipulated by the creditors. Um, we understand that the opposition parties are on board for this. The problem he's going to have is more within his own party because of his, own, his own party was against austerity and was voted into government on the mandate of doing precisely what it is now about to do. This morning, uh, the mood in Greece seems a little bit moving towards acceptance. Uh, there is still anger that the, uh, the, the notion of this is the birthplace of democracy, of course, but the, the very notion of democracy appears to be leaving the country. They appear to be told what to do as far as they're concerned, the Greeks, by other countries. But uh, they see an opportunity there of leaving its rather dysfunctional economic history behind it. I'll just quickly show you, if I may, uh, what's happening in the newspapers. This is a statue of Alexander the Great, the uh, great conqueror, of course. Um, with a bloody nose. That's more one of the sort of tabloid newspapers. Here, uh, the word on this newspaper is vertigo, and you can see a picture of Alexis Tsipras and the type of stress that he's going to be going through right now. And this is a, a more conservative newspaper here, um, which says uh, it is time for Greece to take responsibility. And this is a little bit the conclusion that many people appear to be now coming to, that perhaps it's time to move on. As one person once said to me during the financial crisis that started in 2008, 2009, don't waste a crisis. So this could provide an opportunity. And in terms of moving on, of course, banks being open, being able to get cash out of your account, that kind of normality needs to return at some point. Where are we with that? Well, that's a good question, of course. We've mentioned the vote. The other two things that need to be arranged fairly hastily are for the banks to reopen, and we understand that that is not going to happen before the end of Wednesday. Greeks anticipated that there would be some sort of cash crunch and had set aside for that. I went out uh, to do a bit of shopping yesterday afternoon, wandered around the shops and was watching a bit of consumer behaviour and saw that people still apparently were using cards in shops and still had some access to cash. So right now, it is not an immediate crisis, but it's certainly a very large inconvenience. The other problem is that Greece needs money now. It can't wait to negotiate this bailout, which still needs negotiation. Um, so what it's going to have to do is have uh, bridge financing in order to meet its debt obligations in July and August, most notably on the 20th of July as well, and it has to pay back uh, the European Central Bank. So there are some fairly urgent things that need to be done. It's going to be a very rocky path, and once they're through that, and the summer, which of course the Greeks are very attached to, um, you get to September and you have an unstable government. This is not going to be an easy path to reform. All right, thank you so much. Tanya Beckett, who is in Athens for us. Don't forget as well, you can stay right across all the latest developments uh, by using our website, bbc.com forward slash news. We've got a brand new app you can download. It doesn't matter what device you've got. If it's an Apple or an Android device, you can take part. Create your own news feed, select the topics that are most important to you and use the new BBC News app. It is available right now. Just go to your app store to download it. Greek... It's, uh, sorry, 21 minutes, 7, <laughs> just to remind us. The Greek Prime Minister, Alexis Tsipras, has once again been involved in overnight talks, this time to get his own government to agree to some unpopular austerity measures. Well, one member of his cabinet's already resigned. Strikes have been called in protest against tax rises and pension cuts that are conditions of the latest Eurozone bailout. Michael Argiru, a Greek economist at Cardiff University, joins us now from Athens. Morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. So there's no doubt he's going to have some problems. Good morning. Is Morning. Is he going to get these measures through Parliament, Alexis Tsipras? 
Yes, these are prerequisites for Greece to get a third bailout. Of course, before the elections, uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Tsipras, had vehemently opposed bailouts and their terms. Now he has to bring one of his own. He will have a little bit of a difficult time to convince his own uh, support base, so to speak. But there is no alternative to this, and therefore I expect that these measures will go through. And what about the implications of that um, in the wider, the Greek community? Um, there are talk, I mean, there's talk even in some of the papers of describing this as a coup. Well, of course, this is a dramatic U-turn on behalf of the government. As I told you just now, they had opposed the bailout terms and now they have to adopt them. But the Greek population overwhelmingly wanted a solution to be found. Uh, this is a very, very busy period for Greece. After two weeks of shut banks and quite a lot of anxiety, uh, Greek people wanted a solution. They wanted to stay in the Eurozone. So I think that there is a huge sight of relief, of course. There is no doubt that these measures will be harsh. Uh, there are tax increases, there are spending cuts. It is a price to be paid. Unfortunately, expectations had been raised quite a lot, and now it will be a rather hard landing for the government. Um, let's talk about those measures, because we know he was voted in, wasn't he, on a sort of anti-austerity. Um, that's why many, many people voted for him. So what about all those people who did vote for him, who've been out on the streets, who didn't want these measures? Well, a large part of his uh, voters were indeed expecting that there will be a break with the Eurozone, but another very big part of Greek uh, voters who opted for Mr. Tsipras did not actually want Greece to leave the Eurozone. They wanted Greece to get a better deal. Uh, there were those, including me, who thought that this was rather unrealistic. And I am of the few that sees this as the opportunity for a new beginning for Greece, because so far there was always a mainstream party who opposed necessary, in my view, uh, structural reforms. Now this is not anymore the case. So there is the basis, there is now the background for Greece to accelerate its reform and have a functioning modern economy within the next three or five years. And that sounds like quite a, a fast turnaround. Just tell us on sort of practical terms as well, because we know that banks have been closed for many days now. How are people coping? Well, they are coping with amazing patience, I would say, but there is no doubt that this is something that has affected their everyday life. Everybody looks forward to normality being restored. That is why the overwhelming uh, majority of the Greek population welcomed, welcomed yesterday's agreement. There are those, of course, who will be disappointed. But as I said, the vast majority sees this with a big sight of relief. And hopefully, normality will be restored as these measures are voted, as European parliaments ratify the agreement. Greece wants and needs to go back to normality. Okay, Michael Argiru, a Greek economist, thank you for joining us here this morning. Thank you.